Now, after having discussed about various anti-anginal drugs and as well as the various types of angina, now let me discuss some of the important MCQs that can be asked in the anti-anginal drugs. First, what you should know is the drugs used in angina. Number one, nitrates, beta blockers, calcium channel blockers, cytoprotective drugs like ranolazine, direct bradycardiac agents like ivabridine and as well as your FOX inhibitors that is trimetazidine. So these are the drugs which are used in angina. How the MCQ can be asked is they will give you four options and one option will be not among this list and they will ask you which is the drug not used in angina. So for that reason you should remember all these drugs which are used in angina. Now let me discuss about the important MCQ points about the nitrates. Remember nitrates they are the initial drug of choice for anginal pain that is for acute angina we give this sublingual nitrates. And these nitrates, what is the mechanism of action we have discussed? They act by increasing the nitric oxide release and mainly they are venodilators and thereby they will decrease the preload. And the other important MCQ is they have extensive first pass metabolism except your isosorbide mononitrate. And remember a point here, antiplatelet effect contributes to its anti-anginal effect and the non-cardiac uses of nitrates is because they have they cause the relaxation of the GAT they makes them useful to relieve the esophageal spasm and as well as the biliary spasm and remember these nitrates they are responsible for Monday morning headache due to tolerance which is prevented by avoiding the night dose and there are certain rare side effects of nitrates that includes methemoglobinemia. Methemoglobinemia is one of the rare side effects with your nitrates. And one of the commonest side effects with your nitrates is orthostatic hypotension. That is another commonest side effects. Glyceryl trinitrate, sublingual, it has a high first pass metabolism by nitrate reductase. Whereas you take the intravenous glyceryl trinitrate it is used for the treatment of pulmonary edema in congestive heart failure and for hypertensive emergency also this is a very important mcq what is the intravenous use is for pulmonary edema and as well as for hypertensive emergency whereas you take the other important mcq about the nitrates isosorbide mononitrate it has no first pass metabolism and isosorbide dinitrate it has minimum first pass metabolism and among all the nitrates the long acting nitrate is pentaerythritol tetranitrate is a long acting nitrate whereas if you take the short acting nitrate it is amyl nitrate which is a short acting and remember the important use of amyl nitrate is it is the drug of choice for cyanide poisoning by inhalational route right amyl nitrate is a drug of choice for cyanide poisoning by inhalational route and what are the drugs you should avoid whenever you are giving these nitrates sildenafil should be contraindicated in patients on nitrate therapy now these are some of the important mcqs what you should remember about your nitrates now let me discuss about the important points about the beta blockers so if you take the beta blockers they act by reducing the oxygen demand by myocardium and it is the only class that decrease the progression to myocardial infarction and these beta blockers they are contraindicated in variant angina as they can block beta 2 mediated vasodilatation so these are some of the points about your 
beta blockers. Now let me discuss about the calcium channel blockers. Remember for the calcium channel blockers we have two types of channels L type channel and T type channel. L type channel is present in the cardiovascular system T type channel it is present within the brain. These are that is the calcium channel blockers are indicated in long term prevention of angina or in case of beta blocker ineffectiveness right so these are used for long term prevention of angina and in case of beta blocker ineffectiveness now which are those calcium channel blockers used in the treatment of angina is verapamil and diltiazem they act by decreasing both the preload and as well as the afterload so and you should also remember some of this dihydropyridines which are short acting and long acting nifedipine is a short acting dihydropyridine whereas amlodipine is a long acting dihydropyridine and you take nimodipine nimodipine is a cere cerebroprotective drug which is given in subarachnoid hemorrhage this is a very very important point about nimodipine it is a cerebroprotective drug which is used in subarachnoid hemorrhage and you take the effect of the calcium channel blockers on the heart rate you take verapamil and diltiazem they will reduce the heart rate of the individual and thereby they are used in angina whereas dihydropyridines like nifedipine they will increase the heart rate of the individual and thereby they should not be given in the angina whereas they cause reflux tachycardia and dipyridamol is contraindicated as it leads to coronary steel phenomenon remember along with dipyridamol we have some other drugs which will also cause this coronary steel phenomenon the other drugs include hydralazine which is an arterial or vasodilator and the other one is isoflurane this one also will cause the coronary steel phenomenon so these are some of the important mcqs which will be asked about your calcium channel blockers now let me discuss some of the important mcqs about your ranolazine ranolazine it acts by inhibiting the late sodium current in the myocardial cell the uses of your ranolazine is it is used for long term prevention of angina number 1 the second use is it decreases the incidence of atrial fibrillation and improves the glucose profile that means if this ranolazine it will cause minimal decrease in your hba1c and let me tell you a point here this ranolazine it is contraindicated in torsades d point is and liver failure because ranolazine will increase the qt interval that will precipitate the torsades d point is so that is the reason why it is contraindicated next we have another important drug that is ivabridine ivabridine it inhibits the funny current channels which are required for depolarization of the cells in sa node that maintains its automaticity so the mechanism of action of this ivabridine is very important that is it is the one which will inhibit the funny current channels so these are some of the very important mcq points about the anti anginal drugs